Hello, Uta here of Trans Widow Uta Hagen YouTube channel with an old picture that uh, Nettie and I probably had done with a, an old friend from Madison. Uh, it was at a, a street fair in the summer somewhere in Minneapolis and there I am wearing ye olde old-fashioned dress and my friend as well and uh, I was I felt that I didn't get the best one in the uh, rack but uh, that's Nettie there looking very appropriate as a, a 19th century uh, person with a bow tie and it was it was actually very hot it was like a hot July day in Minneapolis and all of the backs of the clothes had Velcro and so we were wearing shorts and and sleeveless tops or short sleeve tops and uh, then when we took it off we sort of felt like we were walking around in our underwear and then the picture got mailed to us later because that's the way the technology was um, and I had that picture on my wall just for years. I felt, uh, as I still feel, that if you are the ex-wife of a man who claims that he is female, you, the trans widow, still have the right to display pictures that you feel like from your past. You should not be required to change your own past. So that's sort of my retort to the commenters who correct me and say you should be saying she and your ex-wife. Uh, sorry, no. And this is so interesting. Um, so apparently this uh, David Hayton, who has renamed himself Debbie Hayton and admits that he's an autogynophile, has uh, come out with a book and it got reviewed in the London uh, Sunday Times. And now it is really kind of separating the sheep and the lambs because basically um, those of us who are in the Uta camp, we uh, don't want to use female pronouns for any of those guys, no matter how many times they say again and again that they know that they are not women. And uh, there's, uh, this is an interesting thing. I mean, first of all, um, those of us who are in the Uta camp, we can, in our minds, cut his hair shorter and uh, put him into a button-down shirt, which a woman could wear too. Um, and we can see exactly the man that he was. And this is, this is something that... Uh, Really, uh, the therapists and the the uh, people promoting this, etc. Actually, they should be honest, and and they should be saying, "Look, there's going to be this whole contingent of society that still sees you as a man, and in their minds, they can strip away these the makeup and the long hair or the wig and the frilly things." And they just see you, they hear your voice, um, and they know that you are that dude. So, uh, of course, um, I am here at Trans Widow Uta Hagen YouTube channel, and I have a WordPress blog, which is how people contact me through the contact form. My WordPress blog is utahagangrasswidow.wordpress.com. And um, I'm, I'm just not going to change it to Trans Widow on that one. Um, I started it before my channel, and uh, at the time I was promoting the idea of Grass Widow or trying to um, cast about and find a different name for Trans Widows. But I uh, did not succeed in um, recruiting anyone over to my idea, and I just adapted and accept that we ex-wives of the men who ideate a female persona are trans widows. 
And uh, so this, uh, though, the sub subject today is Lorna, um, the sister who was a teenager when her brother started into his um, female persona. And uh, uh, Lorna, I have to compliment you because you actually wrote very well. It was really a stream of consciousness thing, and I thought I was going to have to spend more time editing, but I've, I've sort of just changed a little bit of the order of the pages that you wrote to me. And this is very, very important. I'm going to start with the part I read uh, at the end of my last video as a preview of this and then continue into the rest of her story as the uh, uh, a younger sister who was gaslit, who saw her parents suffering. I happened to know someone up in my town who uh, is the younger sister also, and she feels basically the same way. Uh, the brother's uh, operations and so on and beginning of his identification was uh, only about uh, six, maybe seven years ago. Um, and But the parents are um, not only aggrieved about it, but they feel this pressure to be good lefties so they can't even really talk about their trauma. And again, just like the situation here, uh, autism was a factor in this guy. It was a coexisting condition in that case that I'm talking about, uh, where those, uh, the sister and the brother are in their late 20s and maybe early 30s. And this is about uh, a woman who is in her 70s. And um, I, I'm pretty sure he might have died. Um, anyway, um, she does say, thank you for reading my story. There's a lot more I could say, but just having been able to say this much helped a lot. No one understands the pain if their family hasn't gone through it. Thank you for your inspiring book. So I guess she has read, uh, where is it? In the Curated Woods, True Tales. Oh, I would have to bend over, so I'm not going to show the, the book. But uh, In the Curated Woods, True Tales from a Grass Widow, I Universe 2022 is the publishing date. And it's in uh, an ebook, so you can get it for Kindle or you can get the soft cover. Both versions have my 50 nature photos. Um, and thank you for your courage in speaking out. Thank you for collecting data, for telling the truth, and getting the stories of other families out there. We appreciate it. And you are very welcome. So let me just uh, start with this beginning of this when she was a teenager. I was a very naive 15-year-old when I discovered my missing makeup and underwear wadded up in my brother's closet after he had come home from college after a visit. They were covered with lipstick and semen stains, although I didn't even know what they were until after I was married. After college, my brother was going to be drafted, so my parents made him enlist in the Army, hoping it would straighten him out. Two years later, he went to grad school at the same small college I was attending, and we even had one class together. I noticed one day he was wearing a woman's top and shoes. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, here's what I have finally realized. He has a real mental condition. He is a narcissist. He is most likely autogynephilic, a man who gets off sexually by thinking of his body as a female body. From what I've been researching, a huge percentage of MTF men, this is male to female, uh, so-called men, are heterosexual men with a fetish. It's all about how they look in the mirror and how that excites them. Real women don't get aroused when they get dressed up. Porn is part of this for most from what I've read. This was sexual fantasy from the get-go. And once they go so far, they have to tell themselves this is their authentic self. 
and never admit they have doubts about it because it's just too late. It doesn't occur to them that they destroy the lives of people who love them while they watch their son's self-destruction. They say we should be happy for them, and when we aren't, they call us bigots and haters. Relatives have tried to shame me for not having a relationship with my, in quotes, sister. I tell them I don't have a sister, I have a brother. He will always be my brother. I loved him and always will love him. I pray for him every day. Affirming him won't help him because it allows him to live a lie, I believe, in reality. I feel sorry that he has to live up to this life of delusion and loneliness because of this affliction. He can't help it. It's not something to affirm or celebrate. It's just plain tragic. For many years, I didn't have to think about it or talk about it much. Now, it is everywhere and yes. Yes, I noticed that too. So this thing that the, the uh, trolls will say, why couldn't you uh, move past this? This happened to you 30 years ago. It, it really is this constant smack in the face because it's out there in this cultic way all over, even in small towns like my uh, Hudson Valley, New York town. Uh, now it is everywhere. I just left a church that has become woke about everything political. I couldn't take it anymore. I received a newsletter email today from that church announcing a speaker who will be visiting next month, a Dr. Paula Stone Williams, who is a transgendered Christian writer making the rounds to woke churches to convince congregations that men can be women and live a joyful and spiritual life. Uh, you just excise a few things from the Bible, such as we are made in the image of God. Um, uh, yes. Uh, um, oh, and good Christians need to be affirming because Jesus would be. Uh, I looked up uh, uh, Paula Stone Williams uh, when he came out as trans at 60. His wife was totally supportive, he claims. Ah, but it just so happens they're no longer together. Hmm. I'd be real interested to hear her side of the story. If anybody knows the ex-wife of Dr. Paula Stone Williams, please tell her about utahegangrasswidow.wordpress.com where she can request my survey, 20 questions to ask a trans widow. He did TED Talks. He wrote a book about his journey. He's been on talk shows and PBS. He says the same things. He, he, he says he is still attracted to women, so he's actually a lesbian. He knew he was female since he was four years old uh, and believes he was born in the wrong body. And lo and behold, sexual arousal was never a part of his need to become his authentic self. And no, I'm not an AGP, I'm a natural woman. And this is very common with this, that they deny the AGP thing. And this uh, Debbie slash David Hayton, who has now written a book, thinks that he will be glorified because um, he openly says, I'm an AGP. And I actually saw him on, a, on uh, someone else's YouTube channel uh, this person detransitioned. This is Call Me Sam, Sam K. Uh, but back before Sam K detransitioned and, and was unsure what he wanted to do, uh, he did this um, video with uh, Debbie slash David Hayton. And uh, David Hayton was talking him into uh, that what, what our job is uh, remains um, getting autogynephilia, AGP, to be destigmatized. And at that point, you know, these are very vulnerable, psychiatrically ill people. So they will kind of follow along to somebody who's being uh, insistent about something. Uh, that's another thing that I found. They, they are very easily influenced by the outside. Okay, so this Paula Stone Williams has made a living out of this and her church fell for it. So she decided she 
can't be a part of that church. Leaving places is also part of my story. Um, I have so many things to say about the effect my brother's transition in the 1970s had on me and my family, and I didn't know who to say it to. I chose you because you have witnessed it, and even my closest friends think I'm wrong not to affirm his true self that my brother thinks he is. I am a 72-year-old female, so if he's still around, I, I'm a little bit unclear, uh, but if he's still around, then that means he's in his late 70s. I hoped maybe it might help someone out there if you had the information from a child's perspective growing up with a cross-dressing brother. I've tried to understand it my whole adult life and I have felt guilty for not affirming him. Well, let us release you from that. Don't feel guilty anymore. I'm beginning to think, I'm beginning, I think I'm beginning to figure it out thanks to what I've learned from your book and YouTube content. My older brother was an autistic child but later was functioning well enough. He was awkward socially because of this. He was not feminine. He was not gay. He was nerdy and obsessed with cartoons and science fiction. This, these are all classic, classic characteristics. My mother later told me it all began in, in, at puberty when she discovered that he took her under things. He had a friend across the street who liked to dress up like a woman for Halloween in his mother's clothes and had a stash of pornography that he showed to all the neighborhood kids in a hideout in the field behind his house. Okay, so that is quite a lot of um, factors, right? The pornography being introduced to cross-dressing by someone else who's using pornography, the recruitment, uh, this is all starting to fit. I have always thought this had something to do with my brother's cross-dressing. My brother now claims that sexual arousal was not a part of his desire to be female, but I have since learned that it is that this is a common story that autogynophiles tell themselves and others so that they can stick to the I was born in the wrong body and I knew it when I was four narrative and not feel ashamed. Thank goodness he never destroyed more lives by marrying and fathering children. I'm also glad about that. He destroyed enough as it was. Both of my parents at different times had what they used to call nervous breakdowns while trying to deal with this. It was scary not knowing what it was that was so terrible and couldn't be discussed. I can only imagine how much my parents were suffering during those years. For two people who were born before 1920, just like my parents, this must have been unfathomable. Things are different these days. We have so much more knowledge of this kind of thing. It's not normal, but it's out in the open. So this is my suggestion. There's a little bit more. Uh, yes, uh, I will continue this about the letters. Uh, he apparently wrote some letters to his parents, um, making them continue to feel guilty. Uh, and... Uh, what I can say about this is um, if you have uh, feelings that you kind of wish you were the opposite sex, that's not something to feel ashamed about. Um, it's uh, similar to having PTSD, similar to having anxiety and panic attacks, but unfortunately the mental health profession has in general abandoned you. And as always, I suggest that what uh, needs to happen for people who are having a period of this kind of cross-sex ideation is get out in nature, learn various breathing techniques, and engage in wellness movements such as Feldenkrais physical therapy, Alexander Bodywork or Uta Hagen's wellness movements here in a playlist at my channel. So thank you, Lorna. Um, I, I know that the other sisters of have expressed how they felt it affected them, that it is um, utterly confusing, discombobulating, and annoying. <laughs> they steal your clothes and then masturbate in them. That's not right. 
And any therapist who's saying, oh, yeah, you know, of course you had to do that. Um, I know that one of the other sisters who got in touch with me, it happens that uh, her brother stole jewelry from her and never returned it. And she's become estranged from her family because of this. Um, the therapists are not admitting that this has a devastating effect on all the people around you. And their feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid too, but the, the, um, the cure for it is actually not uh, funneling yourself further into that insecure depression and what I call the glitter tunnel world. I'm going to be heading back outside. We have a really nice sunny day. I'm going to have to put on <laughs> my sunglasses because my cataract surgery makes me quite sensitive to the light. So please do go outside, breathe deeply, enjoy nature, and um, be well. Thank you to the new subscribers. We're almost up to 1,800. We're at 1777 right now. So there's something going on. People are noticing.